Hello, and welcome to Weed and Grub. Yeah, a nice yeah. deep breath. Yeah, first day of a new year. For both of us, mm-hmm. in different ways. Yeah. Your, it was wild last night when you texted me and you were like, I'm setting intentions to the new moon. And I was like, I'm listening to Rosh Hashanah prayers on YouTube. And we're kind of doing the same thing, just with different words. Yeah. It was cool. I really like when you said that. We're doing the same thing, but just diff- slightly differently. And I was like, yeah, I felt really connected to you, even though we weren't together. Totally. Same, same. What was your new moon ritual last night? Because you you just seemed really excited about it when we talked in the afternoon. I was so excited about it. It was sort of following up on the weekend that we had, which we'll talk about. The card reading we had over the weekend led me to get another card reading from my friend Lucy, okay. who then was telling me like in, in sort of tandem with this tarot reading, it's a new moon. This is a great time to set some intentions and to release some things and to make space for new things coming in. New moon and Virgo, very powerful evidently. And so my ritual was basically <laughs> to uh, make myself a really nice dinner and have a little weed while I was cooking and then sit down afterwards, light a candle, um, read uh, some meaningful things, and then write everything out in three ways. I wrote things out as um, goals, and then I wrote out my intentions to get those goals, and then I wrote out like a very clear picture of how I envision things unfolding. Whoa. So I, you put the whole map. You drew the whole map. I drew a big, uh, pretty detailed map. and A lot of treasure. Yep. A lot of X marks the spots. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Cool. And I was snacking on some uh, weed-infused shrimp chips while I was doing it, and I smoked a joint to seal my intentions, and by the time I went to bed, I felt great. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you write them down and then also say them out loud, or do you write them down and then burn them? What happens once they're written? Oh, this was all new. I mean, I, I kind of, I don't have... Um, rituals that I, I don't have rituals really. Like Mm. I'm, I'm just starting to make them up. And so this time what I did was I wrote out the five places where I thought I needed to, um, make some goals and intentions. And it was self, uh, career, um, home, love, and family. Oh, amazing buckets. Those, those Perfect were my buckets. five buckets. And for each one, I did goals, and then I did intentions, and then I did sort of like an essay on like, here's what I think my life could look like if the things that I want to um, manifest actually take place. And then I woke up this morning, I made myself some coffee, I meditated, I lit a candle, and then I read them all out loud again to sort of like seal them in place. So I don't know if that's a ritual that exists, but it's something that I made up and it felt great. The difference... That's beautiful. The difference to me between tradition and ritual Mm -hmm. is just who started it and then kept it consistent. So I feel like your ritual, it's the consistency. Yeah. Yeah. So if you just started, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Totally. Yeah. Yeah, This was my first um, really sort of like intentional series of things that I did to try and seal this in place, which would be a ritual. If I do it again, then, you know, it'll become ritual. Do you feel like you want ritual in your life right now? All the time. I I miss ritual and tradition so much. Same, same, same. Very connected to family for me. And of course, you know, family stuff is so present for me right now. And so, yeah, I mean, that's so comforting. That's so cool because I know that uh, you have Christmas traditions and Mm -hmm. Christmas is right around the bend. And so to start new traditions, rituals right now leading up to a really special time when you can also create new Christmas rituals. I'm getting way ahead of us, but (laughs) I'm just excited for you. Yeah. Yeah. I I, thank you. Yeah. How about you? What was your last night? Like your rituals? So it was the new year at sundown through Wednesday, which is the Jewish new year, Rosh Hashanah. And it's something that I'm not, I had to, you heard me ask Siri, what is Rosh Hashanah yesterday? And Siri's like, okay, Mike, come on. (laughs) (laughs) You should know this. Um, Uh And so last night I YouTubed Rosh Hashanah prayers and just found somebody who looked like they knew him and Mm -hmm. listened to him on a big fat long walk while I said my intentions out loud, said a little like prayer for myself and those I care about, thanked the universe, a little bit of Yahweh, a little bit of God, because 
you know, that's who the rabbi was talking about was one God. So I was like, all right, I'll join the rabbi and talk to a God. And so I said a lot of thank yous. I said a lot of here's what I want. I said a lot of protect everyone I love. And by the end of the walk, it felt really good because, you know, when you're on those stoned walks that make you feel like you're on a path because every light turns green as you get to it. I love those walks. And that's what happened to me heading back to the apartment was three lights in a row turned green as I was crossing the street, didn't stop my flow, got back home, uh, said the mourner's Kaddish, which is a some kind of prayer for dead people. I'm not exactly sure. So I said your sister's name out loud Mm. to start the Jewish New Year with somebody I care about. And uh, then I watched The Hype on HBO Max, all six episodes. So it was like a nice night. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's really neat. I'm so glad that we both like took the time to do that. Same. You know? Yeah. I'm so high right now that like <laughs> re-playing last night in my mind, because for me also, brand new on rituals. Never done them. Don't believe in them. Very suspicious of them. Yes. Don't tell me what to do. I know. Ever. You and I have thought about it and you've said that tradition is, you know, the downfall. Well, and also I think you, you think that uh, nostalgia is dangerous. It's the most dangerous weapon you can have for someone's thoughts is to make them think that something from the past is still important today. Yes. Yeah, we've had this conversation and I have pushed back so hard because tradition and ritual are so important because they are they're like the the what are they called when you put them when you're rock climbing the things that you put into the rock face the pythons I think they're called let's go with that but I know you're talking about a spike yeah the the things that you put into the rock face to hold your place so that they can support the rest of your journey that's what ritual and tradition are to me there are those things that I can fall back on to support me when I'm not feeling supported by other things in my life and also the things that I just enjoy that are like firm that I can count on I mean like the feeling of doing something that you've done every year yet again for me is a source of joy i love the idea of putting a new spike in your mountain that you're climbing yeah with with your own new rituals that's something until yesterday when we both did one Uh that i'm like well it can't hurt to do it again right what if you do it nine times and then it becomes a habit like there's nothing wrong with that and in fact it could be quite exciting so i like these new spikes in our mountaintops yeah fucking cool mary jane together you and i started putting some spikes in our mountain in our in our shared mountain whoa this metaphor is getting really weird but uh when we met and hung out at life is beautiful for the first time which is a while ago now, and we've returned in some way, if we haven't been able to actually go back to that festival, like last year, this time we were on uh, a beach in Washington, but we still right. were like, let's still like get high, affirm life with each other and shake hands on doing it for another year. Yeah. And it's, it's this time every year. It's, this is our new year. You and I have done this now since we've met. Damn. True that. Mm -hmm. Well, what up, Mary Jane? How's it going, Mike? Uh, So good. This is a great start to a conversation. I feel good about last night because I was slightly embarrassed about it. So thanks. Wow. What up, everyone? This is uh, Weed and Grub. Yeah, it's a podcast about comedy. Cannabis. Culture. Cooking. Calling shit out. And uh, tradition. Tradition. Committing. Committing. Wow. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Um, to move on from last night yeah. into the future. Well, okay. Oh no, we can't yet. Well, what are you Because we went about? to a fucking chili cook-off. Well, that's what I was going to say what about tradition. About? That's like yeah. 35 years of this chili cook-off that we went to. Very exciting. Yeah. The Malibu chili cook-off where the second we got there was, uh, Sam Talbot from Top Chef announcing the winner. I was so thrilled to see him in person. It was cool. You were like, is that Sam? I was like, oh, Sam, he's so <laughs> cute. He's so handsome. And I was like, no, I'm not going to go introduce myself. I should, but I'm not going to. You wanted because to. What, well, he, well, yeah. What am I going to say? Hi, I'm a huge fan. And then nothing. I don't know. That is an all <laughs> you thing right there. You just created an imaginary reality that oh does God. not exist, this that is... talked yourself out of meeting someone you wanted to. This is why I don't introduce myself to strangers is because I undo myself in my head before I even start. <laughs> I need to be in a corner at a party and have people like come and find me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so you'll be at a party with Talbot and uh, he'll yeah. come to you. I'll be in the corner smoking a joint and he'll come find me. You there know you what go. I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so yeah, the Malibu chili cook-off, so exciting. Truly had the best chili of my life. I don't know how you felt about it. It was the best chili of... That's why I've waited to post a picture of it. I'm yeah. so excited to post that pic, but I had to wait till we talked about it on here to hit the grid. We had seven wow. or eight kinds, I think, and yep. holy moly. The, the, the thing for me, 
if I were to build a perfect chili and it was the one from the um, Arepa. Arepa stand, mm-hmm. that's the name of the place, the Arepa stand. Mm-hmm. We also got an Arepa. Fucking delicious. Prime rib arepa. But it had like thick, hearty beans. Mm -hmm. It had smoky sweetness. Yes. It it had meat that wasn't so ground that it dissolved in the sauce, but instead it was like hunks of meat. And then it wasn't soupy. It was almost like a sticky chili instead of a soup. Can I use the word robust? Wow, yeah. I felt it like, yeah, it was robust and it had so many notes and nuances because it was crazy spicy, but it didn't hurt my mouth. And it had that beautiful smoky sweetness that didn't overpower any of the other aspects of it. Sometimes that chipotle smokiness can like be the only thing that you really taste. I fucking hate chipotle smokiness. It is in a disgust. It's fucking disgusting. But in this, it was perfectly balanced, and yeah. there was that smoke. And then there, instead of a sour cream, they had some kind of aioli situation. It happening. was a crema and okay. some cheese, and then a tiny. Uh, arepa. Arepa. Yeah, yeah it was a yeah. tiny little arepa on oh, top. Oh, and a little chive top. And whatever that chipotle crema situation was, that whole thing, I mean, I would I would travel long distances to eat that chili again. It was delicious. Yep. Delicious, delicious. And all of the other chilies that we had, but I mean, there were a couple that I wasn't such a big fan of, but I was like, oh, I can understand how someone else might really appreciate this. Like, there was a vegan one that we tried that for me was just overly sweet and it didn't have the consistency that I wanted. It was more like gazpacho-y. Yes. But, you know, maybe for someone who's on a raw food diet, that would be like the one, the bomb. Yeah, it would have been great because it has that sweetness that you probably don't get to treat yourself with, with refined yep. sugar, honey, maple, any of that jazz. Agave, uh, stevia. Let's name all the sweeteners. Okay, guys, sit down. I hope you're, <laughs> wherever you're driving, you got some time. <laughs> Clover honey, blackberry honey, regular honey. Yeah, yeah. comb. Yeah. Comb honey, stevia, what are the... Sweet and low. Agave, blue agave. Equal. (laughs) (laughs) Raw sugar. Yeah, somebody's like, yeah, Yeah, they said raw raw sugar. sugar. That was the one. (laughs) Cane sugar, confectioner's sugar, brown sugar, dark brown sugar, (laughs) granulated sugar. You want to get into the nuts? Turbinado sugar. Yeah, there we go. I hit him with the, yeah. Wow, I got Turbinado out. You're I'm amazing. I'm kind of impressed with myself. Thank you. Same. If we were ever on some weird game show where it's called like Name, name the, the sugars. Twi- Name the Sugars, <laughs> please be my teammate. <laughs> Great. The only other thing from the chili cook-off I wanted to call out was mm-hmm. when that one dude, we went to order his, I think it was a uh, carne chili. It was just called carne chili. Mm-hmm. And I said, can we get a small sample size carne chili? Oh. And he said, we're out of the smalls. We only have larges. Which is the craziest thing. <laughs> That's a crazy thing. We were, yeah, we were doing a bit about what it on the line. We were like, wait, what you're, so you're saying we only have six, we don't have three and three. <laughs> or like, wait, we don't have two, two, and two. Yeah. Or one, 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 and one. Yeah. We only have six. As a stone dude, I was like, oh, that makes sense. Hey, can we get the other one instead? I was like, do you have a small vegan? He's like, yeah, we do. I was like, okay, that one. But yeah, as I walked away, I was like, wait a minute. Wait, what? <laughs> I bet that works on everyone, that kind of upsell. It's not prepackaged. It's in a vat. I see you ladling it. Just take the ladle and put it in a smaller cup. What are you talking about? Take a about? little bit from that large? Yeah. Make that large a medium by putting a little bit of large in a small. And then sell me a small. <laughs> and then sell the medium also. What's happening? Yeah. That was crazy. It was so funny. Also, I was, we were in two separate lines. We were in neighboring lines walking up to the <laughs> stands that were next to each other. And I was looking across at you and I was trying to mouth that there were bats in the sky. Did you see me? Yes. Mouthing. Because it was sunset, magic hour, and these Malibu bats were swooping and diving and catching mosquitoes. And it was so great. And I was looking up and then the people behind me thought I was weird because I was looking up. And so I looked back at them and I was like... It's bats. And they looked at me and they, I swear to God, they all took two steps back. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no, no, no. I mean, it's bats. Like there's bats. It's really cool that there are bats feeding. And, and they were all like, we don't know what's up with this bitch, but she's like looking at fucking bats. No one was talking to you. Why are you talking to Why us? Was, I know. They didn't want to talk to me. I just thought I was like, I'm just drawing your attention to a natural fucking miracle. <laughs> bats are like the most amazing creatures ever. And they're right there. Why aren't you looking at them? They were like, bitch, we just want some chili. Yeah. Do you mind if we go ahead of you? Yeah, so you can... you can stand around and look at your bats, but uh, we're not interested. Yeah. So then we got tarot readings. Yes. And um, Karen. Yes. 
I, I'm a fan, but... Mm. Yeah, listen, I just think that if you're really looking for answers, you shouldn't get your tarot read at a country fair. <laughs> 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 Which is essentially what my friend Lucy said when I contacted her, and I was like, hey, I think I need your help. I need a bit of course correction, because I got a reading at this county fair, Chili Cook-Off, that in some ways was really interesting, but in other ways it was really unsettling, and I don't really understand it. And she was like, just don't get your tarot read at a county fair. Just always like trust the experts. Yeah, but that's because you got a worse reading than me. It's not a worse reading. It was a confusing reading. It wasn't worse or better. It was confusing. And that's She's, not okay when we're talking about the like eternal, yeah. the eternal electric unknown. Yeah, like it's when you're looking for clarity and someone offers you confusion. No. <laughs> that's what's up, yo. So that's 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 all. That's yeah. what had me sort of like feeling fretful. And then I did get an excellent course correction and I'm feeling much, much better. That's great. Yes. That's great. Sorry to make our futures a competition. <laughs> I was like, what's up? No. I won the tarot reading. Like I'm, I was yeah. really glad that you felt great about yours, though. I mean, you know, she said some stuff that seemed specific to me. I'd never had a tarot before. And uh -huh. she also told me about a future that I have a lot of hope and I'm working towards. So mm -hmm. I'll take it because I liked it, yeah. but there was no confusion with mine. So, right. you know, yeah, yeah. Yours was bananas. Yes. And now I've remediated that. Um, and I'm feeling much better. Why do you do it to, to begin with though? As we talk about like Rosh Hashanah and new moons, like I'm, I'm very wary of anybody Drake just had a line in his new album mm -hmm. about like new choices because of my therapist's voices mm -hmm. in my head. And I thought that was like a really hot line. And so I think of you looking at me, does that line make sense? Yes. Okay, cool. Because like, yeah. And then you have a tarot person and that tarot person's kind of correcting your course based on their thing. And well, I'm like, the ah. that's, that's why I didn't sort of feel right about it because I think that what happened at the County fair you know, with a very quick reading in the middle of a fairground was that she does, she did what people probably are looking for, which is very predictive. Like this is what the future holds for you. And this is what you should expect. And here's what your health is going to be. And here's what your financial situation is going to be. It was like, you know, fortune telling, basically reading the future and tarot isn't necessarily about reading the future. It's inviting you to look into what's currently happening in order to then be aware of possible outcomes. That's the difference. It's an right? awareness, not an assertion. Right. Ah, it's shit. It's not predictive. And especially when you're doing tarot work that's trauma informed or really like, you know, you're, you're, you're reading into it with knowledge of current circumstances. It can invite you to just look more deeply into what's going on in your current situation to just better understand the landscape that may lie ahead. Yo, that's all. It's not trying to say you're going to make a hundred thousand dollars because you're going to sell a fucking movie script or whatever. Yeah. It's going to invite you to look into what you're doing right now that might make those things possible for sure. But that's all. So it's really, it's an invitation to ponder some of the mysteries of your own brain and, and life and circumstances. And it's not trying to say this is a quick fix to lead you down a certain path. Well, that makes it a lot more fun Yeah, <laughs> because I was taking it as a prescription from a uh, non-scientific non source. I totally. was taking it prescriptively, right. and that's not the case, so I'm, I'm here for it. Okay, yeah. I'm more open to it now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, don't, need, I don't need new, new moms. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need advice. Okay. I feel, I feel you. I feel like I, I'm... I just want, like, a couple nudges. I, I feel like um, when you say I don't need new moms and I don't want advice, what I'm hearing is that you actually are feeling like a lack of connection to the feminine and that you do want um, to feel connected to it. And it's not that you want advice, but you want to understand it better so that you yourself feel more connected to the feminine mysteries and feminine energy without someone trying to dictate it for you. Um, I will have to think about that <laughs> a lot more uh -huh. to have any type of like say about it because I don't know, uh -huh. but damn, what a good thing to pose to me. <laughs> Would love to dig in. I just, I just think for me hearing any guy be like, I don't need a new mom. I'm like, well, it's cause well, she's a woman. That? I know. But what is that? Like, what does that bring up for you? Like that just oh, brings up I a see. lot of interesting things wow. for me yeah, yeah, yeah. to hear any, any, any dude ever say that is like, Oh, well, what are you, what are you grappling with then? Like, what do you... Yeah, well, I think what it is for me is that if tarot is another parent, mm -hmm. uh, I have no interest. Right, but and, it's... Yeah, okay. And, and um, specifically, like, a as, as, as a, 
adult who has his own identity, what I don't want is a new mom in my life who is like Im- in- imprinting on that identity. Okay. And so when I think of something like tarot and I was approaching it as a prescriptive right. thing that's like, here is what you need to do. Here are your goalposts. Here is what's going to happen next. Mm-hmm. That feels like an infringement on my identity <laughs> from a parent. Wow. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I would say like, uh, um, my metaphor for tarot would be that if you're standing in a room that has several doors in like leading to different directions, tarot is the practice of just opening those doors. Cool. That's all. Cool. It's not trying to get you down a fucking hallway somewhere else. Just like looking at possible outcomes, examining your current circumstance and, and knowing where that might lead. I fucking love that. Yeah. Wow, so much better. Yes. Okay, I'd like to do it again <laughs> with that approach. Definitely. I yeah. mean, you've got to find a really good tarot reader. I'm actually really grateful to have some people in my life who, like, well, you know, I called my friend Lucy, and I was like, yeah, because I need help. I got a weird reading, and I feel strange. So I'm, I'm really lucky to, like, have that. And I just encourage anyone who's interested in it to, like, yeah, do some do some uh, reading and research. It's really a really interesting um, world of, you know, deep, deep old knowledge. Fucking right. Yeah. You want to get to the news? Yes. Okay. It's brought to you, the Grubla Gazette is brought to you by OCB. OCB Rolling Papers, the largest rolling paper brand in the world, crafted naturally since 1918. OCB offers a full line of plant-to-puff papers made with sustainable fibers, farmed from with a, within a 500 kilo, kilometer, kilometer. Kilo, kilometer mm-hmm. radius <laughs> of OCB's facility in France, which is powered by 100% green energy. Last year, OCB rolled out America's first ultra-thin, slow-burning bamboo rolling papers and cones, which are even burning, no-tear, GMO-free, and vegan. Not all rolling papers are created equal. OCB offers a premium smoking experience that we call Harmony on High. Ask for OCB wherever you buy your papers and sample the entire line of products and visit OCBUSA.com. Also, give them a follow on Instagram at OCB underscore USA. Yeah. Do you know how many miles are in a kilometer? Uh, A kilometer is like 1.7 miles. So if we were to change that line in the OCB copy to... No, wait. Sorry. There's 1.7 kilometers in a mile. Okay. So a kilometer is more. A kilometer is shorter. Kilometer shorter. Yes. It's 1,000 meters. So can we change that to miles next week? Because I've <laughs> screwed it up every time. I don't even care if there's a decimal in the OCB. I would like, I would love a mile so I don't yeah, sound so like dumb. 312 miles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> next week, look for that little change <laughs> before the news. <laughs> and our news story this week is coming to you from Green Entrepreneur about Amazon. Ugh. Uh, so Amazon... Uh, has already gone on the record as saying that it would stop testing for weed, stating that um, screening for cannabis disproportionately affects communities of color, and it's been encouraging other companies to do the same. So this story is about how Amazon is actively advising its delivery partners to drop cannabis screening from its drug testing protocol to boost the number of job seekers as the holiday season approaches, because obviously we know that Amazon is going to put everyone through that grinder and, yeah. you know, everybody overwork and underpay season- everyone. Fuck yeah, seasonal work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's, you know, the, this uh, article from Green Entrepreneur says that one of Amazon's partners admitted that marijuana was the main reason most people failed drug tests, no duh, and that by admitting it from screenings, more drivers would pass. Um, which, you know, obviously totally makes sense. And so this is ostensibly sort of a good thing because obviously we want to see a society in which there is no drug testing that should not be a condition of your employment, especially for something like cannabis, but that this ultimately leads to the kind of like overarching policy of Amazon, which is that it wants to um, have cannabis go federally legal so that it can then own weed Mm -hmm. (laughs) and the cannabis industry. Um, like Amazon has been lobbying for like the darker side of this is that they've been lobbying for federal legalization, um, which most people see as a ploy to be able to ship across state lines and then just, yeah, totally take over cannabis. So yeah. while it's a good thing that Amazon has said that it's going to stop drug testing its drivers and employees and that it's working with partners to stop drug testing as well, we got to take the long view, which is, you know, to keep holding them accountable for, right. you know, making things right on every level. It's interesting just, yeah. to make that connection where like a 
is equal like a will lead to d Mm -hmm. and there's some b's and c's in there to Uh make them connect but right now they are connected because that's the plan yeah um but it's also possible to separate those things and just let drug testing fall by the wayside right and also have like a prosperous federal legalized cannabis industry where all fucking people can rise up so yeah. you know it's not a it's not a guarantee yet that's the, you know it's one of the doors of what could happen next is amazon could just take it over and squash all the little guys yes. but maybe not but either way that is a possible outcome it's a possible so we're outcome. giving amazon a tarot reading right now we'll be like let's not look at that outcome let's look at some other better possible outcome absolutely can i read this i uh, was looking at drug policy alliance if you don't follow drug policy alliance they're at drug policy org and they're a great le- along with normal one of these you know great organizations to follow. And we were talking about um, the uh, decriminalizing drugs and just allowing people to, you know, uh, be in charge of their own uh, consumption. It's a, yeah, okay. There was just this uh, great uh, post from them on IG that says, uh, drug policy needs to be based on science and evidence, not emotions. The drug war has been active for 50 years. We've cut down on medical opioid use and we continue to criminalize drug use, yet overdose rates are skyrocketing. Isn't it time for a new approach? The new approach would be to decriminalize drugs, reinvest in alternative health-centered approaches, shift the regulatory authority from the attorney general, from criminal, to the secretary of health and human services to, to, to be a health uh, social issue and address the social determinants of health that lead to problematic drug use. So instead of criminalizing it, it's, you know, that this policy would make it a health issue, so which it is, which it is. It's not a drug issue. It's a health issue. I, well, it is a drug issue, but it's not a criminal issue. Got it. Right. Yeah. And within that, um, I mean, shit, look, you know, you, everyone, if you're on Twitter or the news, like that some, Comedians lost their lives with some cocaine laced fentanyl. And one of uh, our friends, Kate, is in critical condition because of it. And Twitter got pretty fucking hairy pretty quick. And right. a lot of finger pointing was made. And so it's a lot of judgments. A lot of fucking judgments. A lot of races to judgment. Yeah, right? Yeah. And it's, it's nice to hear you clearly state what I also agree with, which mm-hmm. is like, the focus needs to be shifted. It's not a criminal issue. It's yeah. Let's, yeah. let's focus on getting people the support that they need for this. And yeah. you know, not and, putting people in prison and also put that one family on blast. Cause did you hear that they're not allowed to be sued for opioid stuff anymore, even though the they Sackler created family? the entire, they, they created this entire industry that has destroyed so many fucking people's lives. And now they're, they're also like invincible against it. Yeah, so you're talking about the Sackler family who were the owners of Purdue Pharma, and in the recent settlement that the federal judge just signed off on, they're admitting no liability. They're giving up control of the company, which is a multi-billion dollar industry, so they're not going to have control of Purdue Pharma anymore, but they're also walking away with all of their inheritances and estates intact, and they're admitting no wrongdoing. So yeah, that in and of itself is criminal. The judge who actually signed the final sort of thing came out with a statement as he was sort of like signing off on it, saying he doesn't believe that it's actually fair. I don't think anybody believes it's fair, especially if you're someone who lost a, a loved one or family member to the opioid crisis. It's absolutely fucked. They yeah. Or if you're addicted and you're in recovery or you're in the throes of it, like mm-hmm. whatever, it, it's affected everyone at this point. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a crazy it's a crazy thing in a crazy time, and it's also crazy that people are still trying to criminalize uh, cannabis, which is a plant that grows in the ground that has benefits for in so many ways and has never killed anyone. Yeah. Damn. Hell, we went from Amazon to like, this is real. This is real. Uh, yeah. I, I'm so glad we can talk about this on here. This is why yeah. I like doing this with you, Mary Jane. I like doing it with you too. Um, prayers out to Kate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, where are we going to go before we introduce our uh, fabulous guest? We got to hit some buds of the week. We got to hit some buds of the week. Uh, first off, also, can I just say, did I did I say the name of those shrimp ch- shrimp chips that caught me so pleasantly baked last night? No. What's a sh- what's your shrimp chimp? My shrimp chimp. My weed shrimp chimp. <laughs> They're these <laughs> weed infused shrimp chips. If you are in California and you get your hands on some potly p o t l y weed infused shrimp chips, I highly recommend it. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay. Yep. I'll try one tonight. They're delicious. <laughs> I'll try nine tonight. If you have some left, I'll take them. <laughs> I'll try six tonight. <laughs> uh, who's your butt of the week? <laughs> Mike? I gotta get my phone. It's, 
It's Chelsea Frank. It's her th- birthday. Happy birthday, Chelsea. Happy birthday to you. You've been a friend for a long time. You're a great comedian. And your Instagram is Chelsea Frank. So I just wanted to shout you out because, uh, I mean, look at this picture for her birthday. Ah, uh, so fun and cool. Also, the color blocking. I'm yeah. Obsessed. I, l- I like anybody who is a really good artist who works really hard and is also kind. Yep. There you go. And fashionable. My butt of the week is our friend Baldev Sandu, who is not on Instagram, but... Uh, You can see his antics on Ali Lou's Instagram a lot of the time. And Baldev is hosting a show called Go Long this weekend with Ali and Mike Glazer, my fabulous co-host, doing long sets of their fucking awesome comedy. I'm so excited to go see it. It's at the Fantastic... Fanatic Theater. Fanatic Theater. Yeah. Not the Fantastic Theater. The Fanatic Theater in Culver City. Uh, Saturday evening, we'll have it on all of our IGs. I'm going to be there. Come come hang. If yeah. you're in the city, come hang with me and see Mike be funny and Ali be funny and Baldev be fucking awesome funny and a fantastic host. Damn. Damn yeah. Yeah. Uh, also on my Instagram at GlazerBooHooHoo, there's a bunch of stand updates coming up. I'm in San Diego the day after this drops Thursday, and then I'm back in LA for two shows. And then eventually Vegas and eventually St. Louis. And uh, I don't know. They're all on my IG. And then the moon. And then the moon. the moon. You don't know. So many things coming your way. All the doors open. What if the man on the moon was high? Well. I think it would go a little something like this. <laughs> oh, I'm made of cheese. I can eat myself. Something like. You know, it's hot comedy like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I'm coming on Saturday because I love watching you do comedy, and I think you're fucking hella funny. So. Thanks. Uh, our guest. Speaking of comedy. Who's hella fucking funny. Yeah, Katrina Davis. Katrina Davis. Time out LA's one to watch, hot comic to watch of 2019. So fucking cool. Has so much going on. She just recorded an album with Comedy Dynamics, and that got picked up by the Tribeca Festival, and so she just performed the hour. <sighs> Yeah. At Tribeca, and that's going to be dropping sometime soon, hopefully. Um, She's coming to Denver in just a couple weeks. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, for the High Plains Festival. Cool as fuck. Cool as fuck, fun as hell. Got all sorts of like cool comedy irons in several fires, and I don't know, it was just fun to like hang out and have a great time. Follow her on Instagram and uh, Google her for stand-up clips. Yes. I don't know anything else to say. That's it. Yeah? Without further ado, here's our interview and hang with... Katrina Davis. When did you move to L.A.? Uh, six or seven years ago, like 2015. So you're here. You're fully, like, yeah. you're, you're immersed in the Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. I had it. no... Well, the way I came here... In terms of I wasn't making enough money to live off of. I was working at an agency that was super fun, Mm -hmm. but I just wasn't making enough commission to eat. And so I was looking here in New York and Atlanta. So when I moved, it was like, I'm moving to wherever I can support myself. Like, it was definitely a long-term thing. Like, I had started stand-up a year before, Uh and everyone was like, are you moving for stand-up? I was like, no, I'm moving because I have to eat. Yeah. And, yeah, I heard stand-ups there, too. Like, I was so (laughs) new that I was like, no, I'm not moving for stand-up. Why would I be moving for stand-up? Like, I'm going to be, like, so good at stand-up that I would pick a city lived, like, based off it. That's crazy. Like, that's kind of the headspace I was in. Uh Uh-huh. So, yeah. (laughs) What was your first job out here? I worked for Tyra Banks at her beauty company that is now out of business. Whoa. <laughs> what did you do there? Um, social media. So I wrote um, I stuff for their, all their social media platforms and product descriptions and stuff like that. Ooh. Yeah. Was that fun or was it like a slog? It was fun, but stressful because it was a startup. So mm. everything about writing social media, being in... Uh, beauty because that is still like something that I write for on the side like I like writing for beauty still Um, all of that stuff is fun and everything about a startup was still a startup so being super stressful having all of these other hats all of those things and having the heightened level of it being like for Tyra. <laughs> oh my God. Did you ever but have, like, she was, yeah, she was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't, I was about to say, even that part wasn't about her specifically as much as everyone else that you work with being like, we're doing all of this, mm-hmm. having this like celebrity named Tyra do it. I feel like made it even more high octane 
and start up. Like it yeah. added an extra layer to the standard stress of just being like 16 people trying to run a company or whatever. Was that around the time that she had her talk show too? Like she was yes. kind of like trying to run the world at that point, right? We were on, we were very close to that. So we would be on that set sometimes mm-hmm. like talking. Cause I had actually, my first job ever was at a female retail, like, uh, like clothing retailer. And I worked in the marketing department and started doing social media there and would work all the photo shoots because we were super small. So we dressed all the models and did everything. And we hired Chrissy Teigen. Oh. Before, like, she would, like, FaceTime, like, John Legend and be like, I want to, I hope he asked me to marry him. It was, like, a long, long time ago. She was super nice. Yeah. And I would, like, buckle her shoes. And then I saw her <laughs> on set. And I wanted to be like, um, hi. Like, I've legit, like, talked to you topless multiple times. But I was like, she doesn't, like, I was also told to, like, don't talk to her like mm-hmm. specifically like don't try to talk to her and so I was like oh like but she actually remembers me but I don't have time to explain that to anyone and so I just kind of like was hoping she would like look at me and kind of remember but she never even like looked up but I was like I totally know you wow. <laughs> that's wild yeah. it's crazy to think of a mega super world star person as still needing to start something from scratch and it's still as scrappy as any other business any of us would be doing for ourselves. Oh, yeah. Well, in terms of having connections or, like, maybe advisors or something like that. But, yeah. she's Because now she has an ice... She's selling ice cream. Tyra is. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, she is also, in terms of her being very nice, she is, like, that kind of, like, okay... Yeah. Let's do it. So like I saw my mom was like, did you see this? I was like, no, but I'm zero surprised. Like she is that fun that I don't think that she's like, yeah, let's go. I don't care. Like about yeah. like what am I doing during the pandemic? Sure, I don't know. let's Fuck go. It. Start, <laughs> my, start an ice cream business. What? Yes. I, I can totally that. see her being was in Was it called mindset. ice cream? No. Uh, stop. Here's the thing. If she loves stuff like that, I feel like the only reason it isn't is they couldn't get the copyright. Because okay, that great. sounds like something she would Thank love. You. Thank you, but Katrina. It- I didn't like your look at me at all, Mary Jane. <laughs> and I'm going to put it out here on record. That look you just gave me was like, Glazer, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but she did trademark Smize, didn't yeah. she? Whoa. We had a lot of... That was probably another thing that was really fun there was naming products because she because everything's just allowed to be super crazy. So it was really fun being like Team Google Dog for whatever name of yeah. color and stuff because you can just come up with whatever you want, any kind of dumb pun or whatever. It was really fun to uh. even just read all of the ones. We'd be like, we cannot do that. Hilarious. And yeah. just like cross it off. <laughs> it was really fun. Yeah. Man, that must be so fun to have like the brain that you have and then sort of translate it into beauty writing and ad copy to make it like fun. And, you know, because I think everyone underestimates how um, punch up really can work just in that world, too. Like I was just working on some branding copy, boring ass copy for a cannabis company. And they had come up with something and they were like, it's fine. And I was like, what about this? And I just did like one boop. And they were like, it's amazing. Yes, and I was like, That's people, why get- people need like professionals like yes. you to like make it good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, even if you come up with something like you said, that's in the vein and you'll say some in terms of phrasing or mm-hmm. whatever, an alliteration, they're like, that's so much better. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, that's literally what the one thing I'm good at. Is knowing that this sounds better this way. <laughs> yeah. We were just watching a commercial. Uh, we were lens crafters. lens crafters. Thank you. I couldn't come up with And it was like lens crafters because sight. And we looked at each other and we were like, where the fuck was everyone that day? But what? because it's hot right now, Joel Hadley, friend of the podcast, my best friend, just put on his Instagram story because he has a puppy named Falcor, um, because smiles. And uh-huh. it's just a bunch of pictures of his fucking dog. Uh, so because it's, because it's a hot tag right okay. now. Right. All right. I, I, I'm not saying I like it. <laughs> it's too, it, it says nothing. Mm-hmm. Right. But like, I'm just, I'm defending because and I'm not sure why, <laughs> but that's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> the next one's just going to be like Lens Crafters, sight tweaking. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just, like whatever. Yeah. <laughs> because eyes because anything. because anything yeah yeah well what do you remember your favorite of any of any of the copy or taglines or oh, products that you named and then yeah. you saw it you know getting produced and saw your mm. words on something oh because i don't know of anything because it is really like kind of fun and exciting but it is also corporate so it's kind of hard sometimes to pick out the things that are still yours enough that you can feel that level of ownership over it. Mm -hmm. It's like, this did well overall, and the team is happy with its success. Mm -hmm. But 
what I originally wrote has been added and changed for all of so many different reasons that it's like, not like it's totally unrecognizable, but it definitely doesn't always have that same level of like, I did this. Like it's more like a team thing. Yeah. I think that's why I love stand up the most <laughs> because like well, nobody can touch. It's just yours. It's just mine. You know, I feel like it's always been the outlet that I did like for that reason, because I feel like, um, it made it easier to compromise at work. Yeah. When people wanted to do stuff that was like bad or ugly or I didn't think it was good and I would just be like mad because you wanted to be the best it can sound or whatever Mm -hmm. and being able to let that go because it was like, yeah, this is work stuff. This isn't mine. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, there's so many times. When I was in Chicago, I would do a lot of temp work and they would always send me to ad agencies and the ad agency would be like, oh, you're a funny guy. Do you want to like pitch shit with us? And I was like, you're not paying me anymore, but maybe this will turn into something full time. And I'd like, it was, I'd never been in a writer's room. And so I would mm-hmm. just at that time. And so I would pitch something and then everyone was like, we love it. And then I'd hear the final product. And I'm like, this is a piece of shit. Like, never, oh, yes, what are you doing? It never ends up being like exactly like whatever they love so much that you did. Yeah. yeah. So you got to LA six years ago. Mm-hmm. You're working, writing yeah. and doing social stuff. How did how did the comedy balance out? Like how did you? I just the, thought did it at night. Yeah, just like I was already used to doing. I even in terms of my like upbringing was always like whatever you like to do is kind of like okay that's cute, but you can like find whatever you need to do to live based mm-hmm. off that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you work hard so that you can do whatever it is that you love cuz what you love probably isn't going to make that much money cuz I did always love art and things like that. Wait, were you backup plan raised? I'm not I don't understand what you mean. Kind. Well, like if you like art, that's fine that you like art. I'm not going to tell you that you can't be an artist, but you're not going to be a professional artist, so yeah, you have to find a day job and then you can paint whenever you want kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Until your hobby transitions into your main. And then and that being something that no one believes that your hobby is never going to be a hobby. It's totally. like you love doing that. So make sure that you can support yourself in a way that allows you to also be able to do that. But like no one was like, you're going to be so good at your art that you can actually live off your art. That was not really kind of entertained. Right. Yo, uh, I don't know your family, but I will it's- say I... Um, my family was like, get them, you know, you can do it all. You're special. That's and nice. I don't know which is better, but you seem like you have such a good head on your shoulders and I've heard and seen your comedy and it's funny as fuck. So maybe like, <laughs> that's the way to, Well, it's a balance because my mom's more like that. And then my dad was the one that would like come to shows in bars in my first year of doing stand up, and like, be like, you're funny. Everyone was laughing. Like, <laughs> yeah. back and be like, she's good. Like, yeah. and he was even when I was way younger and I was like, mom, I want to be an artist and she was like okay well that's cute my dad like helped me mail in the like artist institute pamphlet that they used to do on commercials oh shit with the parrot yes I drew I drew the turtle with the turtleneck and the cabbie hat (laughs) and and I was so little that I couldn't figure out mail on my own I remember being like help me do this like I was on the phone and I messed it up or they could tell I was a kid or something so he had to do it for me Mm -hmm. and he like let me take the test and mailed it in for me and they like sent it back with all these like good job keep up the good work then stuff but like my dad definitely entertains dreams more so i think it's a balance <laughs> that just sounds like a healthy balance it, especially when you know you come to a place like la where there are so many people who are miserable because they thought otherwise yeah and that's so much harder when you're not really prepared for like the crushing reality and of i was life. very hardcore practical about there's no way i was gonna move here and not have a way to pay rent i wasn't oh, gonna there's yeah. no way that was my problem in florida and it's cheap so I definitely wasn't gonna right. that does not make any sense there was no way I was gonna be able to do that there was nowhere for any more money to come from so like yeah. I didn't have that option and I was a little bit older right I felt like that different too in terms of even coming into comedy I was what 26 when I started yeah mm-hmm. and so even when I came out here in my head I feel it less now but definitely the first like two or three years I was like I have to catch up like everyone around me has been doing this since they were in college and all of you know what I mean feeling this mm-hmm. like even if I am good I need to be good I'm old like <laughs> I'm older than you like if I'm at a mic it's almost like you're good it's like I should write I've been writing literally writing mm-hmm. for like five more years than you even if it wasn't comedic so and you have something to fucking say 
too. As opposed to when you're younger. I think so. I cannot yeah. imagine. I have tried to think about that before in terms of I've always loved comedy and knew that I would try stand up at some point, but I was just like, I'll do it once before I die. Mm-hmm. Did not really. I love stand up so much that I was like, I'm not going to be a stand up. My friends think I'm funny. They know me. I'm not. <laughs> this is different. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I didn't even have that kind of, you know, aspirations for it anyway. No wonder you're successful. Jesus Christ. <laughs> My bar is mad low. Yeah. I get to, to like people even at mics and stuff will be like, oh, why are you so happy? And it's like, there's people here, aren't they? Yeah. That's <laughs> why are you so upset? If you're so upset, you should leave. Yeah. You should go home. Like I, cause I also don't hit mics like other people. It's like, I take a lot of naps. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do this. No one asked you if you feel like you legitimately don't want to do this all the time, then like you should ask yourself some questions because mm-hmm. I don't want to be around you pouting all the time. <laughs> I just, I just, you're just making me think. I just heard a panel at a weed jobs fair mm. where they were talking about getting into the cannabis industry being something that you truly needed to love to the point where you were willing to lose absolutely everything mm. at any time, maybe multiple times. That's and risky. you're just making me think of that. Like that's how the cannabis industry and comedy are actually sort of connected and very similar is that you need to be willing to do it all the time Mm -hmm. and lose anything, anytime, any opportunity that comes your way and then have to start all over again. Like you submitted that packet that you spent two weeks, blood, sweat and tears and everything. SNL. And And then, yeah, and start again, push that rock back up that hill. And so you're just really making me think about, because that was, it really struck me, these cannabis titans sitting on the stage and Mm. they were all like, we've all been incarcerated, all of us, and we've all lost everything. We've all been raided. And it was just crazy to listen to that. And now you're making me think about like, that's the same thing in in comedy as well. It's It's like, like, yeah, I like change in bathrooms and like nap in my car, my day job. And then I'm like nine o'clock at night driving to El Segundo being like, why? Why do I do this? Have you ever been driving to a show tired and been like in that haze where you even blank out and you're like on, you've been on autopilot for like three hours. You're like, what Mm -hmm. is even happening? And then you get there and you're like, yeah, no, I do do this for a reason. But like you'll black out even on like, I don't know what it is to be like, wait, am I doing this on purpose? What is happening? And then you're like, no, I do actually like this this much. It's crazy. It's like, um, I hadn't, performed in Palm Springs before recently and I thought it was like an hour away so I left like at like 3 30 in the afternoon to get to a eight o'clock show I got there like barely on time oh my and then gosh. I was like I was like do I get a hotel it's like midnight like what do I do <laughs> yeah. now and instead I drove back uh-huh. and I looked and it was but it was still two and a half hours and I don't remember any of it like I just remember pulling into my driveway and crashing on my bed and right yeah because I was just like I was like, I did it. It was a great show. I yes. feel good. Let's yep. power through. And then you just like drove home on show high. Yes. Ooh, and passed out. Show high and a diet Mountain Dew, like whatever, whatever's bigger than 48 ounces. Yeah. Oh my goodness. They <laughs> oh, wow. make those? You drink a 64 ounce? I drink ounce a keg. You drink a big gulp? <laughs> yeah. Was it, sh- was it shaped like a novelty barrel? <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> it was like right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a seatbelt on. It's so big. <laughs> it's so big. It set off the like... Eat the light that says like the airbag is gonna deploy. It's cool when you get it. They take the tube off of a beer bong and stick it in it so that it can like curve into your uh, driver's side. It's pretty sweet thing they're doing. <laughs> How do you fill up? What is your like? What well do you go to to drink from to fill up to like go do all this stuff? Mm, I sleep a lot. Mm-hmm. I sleep a lot. I go to art museums. I go on walks all the time. Like even before um, COVID, I would. I'm really into sunsets. Okay. <laughs> and moving here by myself, not like, oh my God, who doesn't like sunsets? But like, I'm weird about like being outside at that time to like mm. see it. Like I have to like say goodbye to like the day. It's like the end of everything. And then like everything's starting over. And so I was already like, driving to other neighborhoods and I would walk around at sunset or find an art gallery and then walk around and find food or whatever it was just to think. Mm. and hear people and whatever um and so i feel like i still kind of just drag all of that stuff over and yoga i do yoga yeah and i started doing um hit exercise like the yeah. high intensity oh workouts that like are like 30 minutes they're not that long but they're freaking insane and they make me want to cry yeah like it's just like pushing yourself to 
in terms of even dancing and doing conditioning when I was in high school and stuff, it's like I have not pushed my body to these limits in so long that I was like mad the first time that it was so hard. So now I have this like internal thing that I'm like pissed that they <laughs> need to be easier. Um, so that's fun to just like, even though it sounds so dumb and cheesy, but it's like listening to even the auditory um, affirmations of what physical limits feel like because it's like literally wow. Nike stuff but it's like you are your own whatever da, 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 keep pushing you never know but it is also the manifestation of me feeling like I can't go anymore and actually not stopping is a thing I think mm. so I just started that like a month or so ago but yoga is my shit for yeah. sure yeah, yeah, yeah what kind of yoga just like regular what shavasana i don't know well, that's just the laying down part at the end yeah. i don't know what the style because i used to do it from a lady that i really like uh, that she just was connected to the building that i used to work in okay so my only teacher i've ever had is um in el segundo at om yoga she's amazing her name's maddie and she's really nice but i don't know what kind of yoga that is i'll email her and ask her but we used to do like extra we started doing zoom classes over oh cool covid to learn more about it i have this teeny tiny book that i haven't read at all sorry maddie um it's real funny to picture you walk into class just in time to lay down with everyone and be like sorry i'm late I is it still time is to all, lay down i'm just late to every yoga class where i think it's just laying down that's funny uh, <laughs> I was like, I don't know awesome. why you guys get so sweaty. It's just laying down. Um, <laughs> no, but it's really slow and mm -hmm. controlled and focuses on your breathing a lot. It's Ooh. not the fast kind and it's not hot. Yoga I just, I ask blackout. because there's so many, especially, you know, in LA, I think, you know, there's every kind of yoga available mm -hmm. here and there's like the core power yoga or no, the like, it's like super crazy Bikram or the ones where it's like, you know, you do, I don't know, crazy. Sex cult shit. No, bomb, and I'm not yeah. doing like <laughs> yoga so hot that I accidentally break a rib because you know, Ooh. people were doing that, right? Ugh. They were like getting so hot that like they couldn't tell when they were pushing their muscles too far uh, and people were like bruising themselves and stuff in yoga and it was like hey you know what yo. you can do it in a cool 75 degree room yep. also yes. and you'll warm up <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah that was a big thing in terms of just like breathing and having time to be quiet mm. and not look at your phone and focus on your own breath and just laugh at the places that your mind goes when you're trying to think of nothing and continuously coming back to that. Yes. All that discipline, I think, really helped me through when everyone was full on zapping out. I was doing yoga like every day. Oh, so good. <laughs> so necessary. With your stand up, how the heck did you go from? I know the pandemic is still going on, but I'm going to say yeah. the main pandemic yes. like all the way through first wave, first wave, <laughs> yeah, yeah, first wave pandemic um, to recording an album with comedy dynamics to then recording a live hour set at Tribeca. Like, how the fuck did you do all of this while the world is in banana town? Like, what the fuck? Uh, well, I hadn't done anything like that before, so I did have a lot. Of material. You took all your material from your entire career and uh, everything put it that I liked. Yeah. And then I started with that list and then kind of realized, like, oh no, this is going to be like an introductory thing. So it isn't even necessarily like all of my strongest jokes, even. It's kind of like a narrative that I wanted to build because this is a lot of people that know me from fucking Adam. They have no idea who I am. So it's kind of like, I hope kind of shows people kind of an idea of what I'm like and where my brain goes and stuff. Yeah. And then, um, but I did start with all of that and then went from there. But I did at the very least have practice from Zoom shows. Like I didn't run to like, and everything shut down and everyone was freaking out and shows were getting canceled. I was like, I'm taking this month. Like I'm going to chill and write and look at Google Docs and figure out how to huddle down in my apartment because I already kind of had the vibe from my day job even mm -hmm. um, because they're like super rich conservative men that like own it and when we shut down I was like oh they know something like they wouldn't make us not make money for them if they didn't have to like this is real as hell yeah they got the, so they got a text I from already, the FDA that's how I felt I yeah. felt like I had this whiff of like internal I was like mm, this is gonna be real so like I had already kind of gotten things to work from home more long term and was already kind of mentally shutting my brain down and was like, I don't know how long we're not going to have shows, but I was just adjusting to being home at like even being home two days 
in a row in the time that you would normally have shows was like, this is how people live real life. You're just home every night. This is wild. This is weird. I did not. It was like kind of nice to have that break from it though. And then people started talking about Zoom shows and being like, oh, are you going to do Zoom shows? Oh, it's so weird. And I was like, I'll do it if someone asks me. I don't care, dude. Mm -hmm. And just kind of tried them and did the ones that I liked. And that I think just helped me feel at least somewhat normal talking to people. Yeah. And I did do 45 minutes in the beginning. That sucked. I bet. Um, you it did was, 45 minutes on Zoom? In like the very beginning of the pandemic. It was so bad. Wow. Um, and then uh, and then just kept doing shows after that. But then uh, when that came up and it was with Tribeca, I was like, oh, yeah, like this sounds cool. Like I'd try this. And kind of in my head, it was still super abstract. I still, even when they emailed me, was like, okay, but they're going to find somebody else that's sure. more famous that can take the spot. Um and was still just kind of preparing for the one I did at junior high. So I did yeah. a practice one at junior high, which was so much fun. Cool. Um, just because my friends were there. That one, I'm starting another thing that hopefully I'll tell you guys or show you guys in the future uh, that is like kind of sprung from how good that felt, just having all my friends there and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then even then was like, I'm at worst case preparing for this hour and we'll have an hour. I like, I still didn't know if I was going to get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then like they tagged me on Instagram. I was like, oh, cool. All right. I got it. Wow. Wow. And I was like, okay, so now I have to do it. And it was kind of me out loud in my apartment by myself being like, all right, bitch, like you asked for this. And I guess it's as ready as I'm ever like good a time as any. I don't know. You know what I mean? When, oh no, I don't know when this will feel any more comfortable. So Sure. Wow, an hour on just totally everything virtual. Oh, well, the one that we recorded was in real life. In Tribeca. Okay. But in the beginning, like what? That was like first wave time. So what, two uh, falls ago, I mm-hmm. probably did like 45 minutes online and it was like, ugh. Whoa. It was gnarly as hell. Yeah. Is there any platform that really, because we all hung out on this new platform that you introduced me to oh, like, yeah. where we just did that cool little best friends <laughs> yeah. show that you made on We're F- working. Famera, right? Yeah. I, well, here's the thing also, it's Famera. I've been calling it Famera. I don't even say it right. <laughs> but you two were my first episode on this amazing show that either, well, it probably won't uh, stay on there just because they're still in beta Right. But I'll probably start it called Best Friends. And you all were my first episode, and it was so awesome that it's a thing now, basically. <laughs> so great. So yeah. it's like interesting to see a new platform or the other platforms. Like, do you dig Twitch or do you, have you found I'm, spaces that are good for your comedy that are not real life well, spaces? Well, now Valley Girl that I brought back to real life at junior high in Glendale, I just bring my laptop to every show because awesome. I have a bunch of people that have been watching me online for a year and a half now and they will like oh sorry and they will like watch they're just so awesome they'll they'll come to valley Girl online and be like oh sorry i was on there's this guy patrick i love him hi patrick he like does woodworking and like makes things and does photography and all this stuff and one day he, oh no that might be roy i have all these friends now Yo. patrick does photography roy i think does woodworking but he one day was watching the show on zoom and was like sorry i'm on mute i'm in the workshop and then the next day he posts all these handmade pens out of wood like Whoa. he does all of this stuff and but he from all these online shows just like yeah i also like your comedy so i and i don't even know where roy lives so there's a bunch of like fun friends that i made that now i basically when i posted that i was gonna bring the show back i was like don't worry like i won't leave y'all behind i'll definitely have an online element and people were like yeah thanks like we want and even people who i had a friend who who loves to come in real life but his babysitter bailed on him so then i sent him the link at the last minute and he like messaged me after was like oh thanks like i got to watch and just like have my headphones in and my kids here you know so that's so good i I feel like it has kind of changed it yeah Forever, but maybe not in a bad way. Not in a bad way. And Zoom, I know Zoom has been different for everyone, but if you just treated it like you were talking to your friends on like a Zoom happy hour, it was, it's different. It does not feel the same, but it's not like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so horrible. Yeah. And also to get like stand, stand up nerdy about it. If you're on a Zoom and you're almost like talking like you'd be talking to friends, you can really like cut the fat of your jokes because you know what feels natural and what you retain. And then the rest of it, doesn't even fucking matter, which I do think is a pretty cool tool to be able and to use. And honestly, it helped me with, I talk super fast. I don't know if anybody on the podcast can tell. Yeah, everyone, <laughs> everyone has slowed this one down to like I'm half sorry. speed. <laughs> I tra- my my entire life I've been told this. I'm constantly She really is a hurricane. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a whirlwind. Um, but like, 
I uh, I think it helped me with my pacing a little bit. Mm. Knowing that you have to maybe wait for a second delay or for people to finish yeah. laughing or whatever. It, I think it helped me a little bit. Is it like you're pretending you're on TV when you're doing a Zoom show? Are you pretending like you're on a sitcom at all? I kind of will sometimes pretend, not pretend, I feel like I'm talking to the other comics on the show even sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that's who I'm kind of posing the question or whatever that thing is in the joke. I think, and that's even in smaller ones, the big ones, no. I feel like I'm talking to all the people I'm looking at. Yeah. If I'm on gallery, I'm literally looking at all these people and I'll call people up for like, oh my gosh, yes, thank you so-and-so for shaking your head. That's disgusting. Like I, you know what I mean? That's it does awesome. feel kind of like a version of what you would maybe do in real life. I don't do know. you remember the first bit that you wrote or did from everything that got you thinking, damn, I'm going to do this every single night or oh. the, or the show. Like, did you perform in Florida before you moved out here? Yeah. On like our like Jacksonville shows. Yeah. Um, Cause our scene, it's way bigger now, but there were like 16 or 17 comics at the time and we would just all be at the same. And they were traveling more than me where they would like drive to St. Augustine, like an hour away for a mic. Like I went to a mic a week at yep. this time. So um, the first joke I told on stage was because I got dumped that morning. Oh, and so fuck. I'd had in my head that I was going to do it at some point and then decided that day that I was like, okay, well, this is going to be the day that I do stand up for the first time. Not that I got dumped before I dropped off a guy who doesn't have a job and I went to my job. And so <laughs> wow. I decided to like go up that night and the first thing I said on stage was like, yeah, I got dumped this morning. And I was like, normally you can kind of tell when one of those things is coming, but it was really abrupt. Like it was like, fuck your face. And then it was like, fuck your face. Oh, Ooh, and that was the good. first <laughs> thing I ever said on stage. So that, I don't remember the rest, everything else I had, all of these other written whatever, mm -hmm. but that was the first thing I ever said on stage. And so, and it caught like you felt the energy back from the audience, just being like, "Yep, I did that's decent. It. I did decent yep. in terms of like I had been because I went to this mic for months and did not speak to anyone. Mm -hmm. So I also knew at that point at least what it would be like to do badly. And was like, okay, they didn't hate me. Went home, and then that entire night was just up writing jokes. I was like, fuck, now I have uh, to go back. Yep. I didn't. <laughs> lo I was happy because I was terrified. So I was happy that I had done it. Mm -hmm. And I could say I did it and never do it again because I was very stressed. Like, it yep. was so nerve-wracking. And then I was like, great, now I have to go do these. Like, <laughs> I was like, mad that I had new jokes. Yeah. yeah. But it definitely was a thing where I was like, yeah, I've just never not had new jokes now. <laughs> so great. Have you met Beyonce for real? No. Beyonce? No. You mean Tyra? Well, no, I know now I know you met Tyra, but you have that great joke about uh, Beyonce oh, and the Jacksons. No, I've And I was never like, well, met she, she's met Tyra. She must know, like, the <laughs> no. coolest people in the world. No, that would be massive. No, I've not met Beyonce. Okay, because I, I think uh, she'd like your joke. I wonder about that. I wonder <laughs> if she would hate that joke or not. Can you say the joke for our listeners, oh, please? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, it's that, because I did actually do this recently just because people will randomly talk about how amazing she is. Um, but that like you shouldn't be that impressed with Beyonce because she has natural talent and came from like a supportive middle class family and that basically the Knowles are just the Jacksons if you replaced all the hitting with hugs. <laughs> <laughs> And, like, no one, like, she should be that good. Like, yeah. absolutely. Like, Solange is the goth one, and she's amazing. Yeah. So like, yeah, she's the quote-unquote troubled one. And yes. She's like, like yeah. black girls that cry like Solange more. It's yeah. like, <laughs> I'm doing a poll. I think it's a real thing. Um, That's so funny. It's yeah. like, yeah, I'm not, not that I'm not impressed. I'm impressed to the uh, amount that I feel I should be. Yeah. <laughs> With your dad, if your dad made you practice for star search in a big basement before you hit puberty you'd probably be pretty good now yeah <laughs> you just never stopped that's so funny oh man she is oh. kind of our like gold medal olympian performer of all yeah. time right like she's won yeah. the gold she's... for our country year after year yeah because yeah. now because she just had a birthday her birthday was like yesterday yeah something. happy 40th yeah yeah 40 amazing yep. and she dropped that adidas line yes she did yeah that looks sick oh man wow that's a solid fucking joke <laughs> <laughs> What about weed? Wait, what do you mean? I don't know. It seems like you like it. I do. I was like, where? What do you mean? <laughs> um, yeah, I um, even in high school, it was kind of my thing in terms of 
growing up in Florida and drinking being very cool socially. And I still do drink, but I've always liked smoking more. Like, in, I smoke and I do hallucinogens. Those are mm-hmm. my main things. And yeah. those are just kind of like where I like to put myself if I'm going to be in any other place and just being present, you know, Have you heard the term sober. California sober? No. It it was kind of popularized a couple years ago, but it's been around for a minute, but it's anything plant-based. So weed, <laughs> psychedelics. Yes. You know, just no I booze. could totally do that. Or, yeah. you know, things that are like synthesized. Yeah, yeah. yeah I could totally do that. Uh-huh. Um, so I very much enjoy weed. I smoke it pretty much every day. Nice. Um, it's definitely helped me through uh, some hardcore panic attacks. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I'm when a- you, I'm interested in that because for a long time, weed, I, I just couldn't figure out what worked for me mm-hmm. because more often than not, if I got really high at a party, I would have a panic attack and mm-hmm. I would have to like figure out how to stand in a corner and calm down before I could like go to the kitchen and get myself some water. <laughs> and then I figured it out oh, and it was God. like, well, just like, just dehydrated and afraid. I'm yeah, so totally. Dehydrated <laughs> oh, and afraid at parties. That's absolutely. That's so sad. Like, oh. There's a sizzle reel of her entering the party and then a black screen and then it comes back and she's like in the corner rocking and then it just says the tag. Dry <laughs> mouth and big eyed. Oh, yeah. Please. Cotton I'm mouth and terrified. This year. Cotton mouth and terrified. Oh my goodness. No, but what I figured out was like uh, certain certain strains that I prefer smoking, but also that I just like lower doses. That Edibles like, you know, help low dose edibles with yeah. anxiety mm-hmm. is opposed to smoking helps me with like probably just my regular everyday anxiety but if i'm like gonna fly mm-hmm. or something like that edibles help yes and it did take me a while to figure that out yep but i am yes. definitely my dad oh my gosh because i was talking to my dad about edibles and just kind of like learning about all that stuff because they came out and i showed him like my little drawer and he was like what yeah weed, uh. and uh and so he was asking me about edibles i was like yeah dad i was like i had a panic attack at the airport and ate a whole pack of those things one time and he was like what <laughs> <laughs> i was like yeah like i was like it just set me off like in terms of where i think i was driving to my boyfriend at the time was driving me to the airport and i was like I don't want to get on this plane. And he was just like, wow. I was like, I don't know. I just don't want to get on this plane. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know when someone's listening to you but not listening to you? Like, he was like, it'll be fine. And I was like, I don't want to get on this plane. Like, you don't understand what I'm saying. And then, like, it slowly got exponentially worse. And then I was just, like, by myself at the gate. And I, I was, like, hyperventilating on the phone with my mom. And she was like, what's wrong? I was like, I don't know. I just don't want to get on. She was like, do you think something bad's going to happen? I was like, I don't know. Like, I couldn't even, like... Focus it on like the plane's gonna crash. I'm just like I don't even want to be on there. I don't know. And I like went in the bathroom and just like ate like a hundred milligrams of gummies. And then I was just at like a dull hum for the next yep fourteen hours, and it was fine. And that plane ride was okay. Yeah, yeah, that was fine. Where were you going for fourteen hours? Or no, not really, but eh, probably with layovers, like <laughs> and ten, um, Florida. Oh, okay. If you go back to Florida, it's never direct, or right. I never get a direct one unless somebody else pays for it. Yeah. I can never find them. I don't know where they are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so once you sit somewhere for a couple hours, it ends up. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I did the same thing. I got off a plane right before they closed the doors because I was having you a did? panic attack. I was like that person oh, no. running up the aisle, like, let me off, let me off, because oh, it was no. pouring rain. And I had like a final destination fucking moment where I pictured the whole plane going down and had <gasps> and that got weird off? permanent. Fuck yeah, I got off. And I just like sat at the bar, ate an edible, took three shots of whiskey and waited for the next one. Oh, and then you did end up flying that day? Uh, I did because I had to because I like oh. had to meet my family. But I feel you on those like weed, edible, flying, panic attack moments. Because mm-hmm. the first panic attack I ever had, I was in college and definitely did not equate smoking with like... Um, I don't even know if I would equate it with stress that much at that time. I kind of just smoked it recreationally for fun. Mm-hmm. Like, because I probably didn't have enough stress to worry about it. But I had a heart. That was the first one that now I was just talking to my friend about this, about like knowing when your brain is about to do it mm-hmm. and being like, I have a very rapid internal dialogue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That would be like, we need to get out of this room. You can't get out of this room. Why do you want to get out of this room so bad? I don't know. We got to get out of here. We can't. Like, it's like that fast. And whenever that's happening, I'm like, okay, now I know. Mm-hmm. But I was doing that in a presentation for a final. Oh my God. And I was with the three other girls on our team. And one of them was so determined to like, in terms of her, like she was such a go-getter in doing so well in school that she was nicknamed the Pitbull. Oh. 
And so she was on my team. That was like the energy that was in the room of how badly these women wanted to succeed. I was basically with four living stilettos <laughs> and me. And I'm just freaking out in my head. Like at one point, our teacher was giving us feedback and the sound went out and I couldn't hear her voice anymore. And I could see her mouth moving. I was like, this can't be good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whoa. It was so bad. Did you pass out? No, but I like, bla- I like I could not hear. I could hear like ringing. Yeah. And we were supposed to go get like celebratory drinks after. I just grabbed my stuff and ran to my car. Everyone's calling me. I didn't pick up my phone. I went back to my apartment, threw up, had a migraine for like eight hours, and then woke up the next afternoon. Whoa. And I was like, Mom, I don't know what happened to this. She was like, I think you had a panic attack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it knocked me off my ass. But I think it was like a semester's worth of stuff I wasn't mm-hmm. noticing mm-hmm. all coming to culmination. Yep. And so now I try to like realize when i think yoga helps yep i have like little mini ones yoga and weed and <laughs> sunsets and yes. taking great care of yourself yes. and doing high knees until you almost want to cry yep mm-hmm. <laughs> all those things man my my indicator is um physical i feel the little wheel start to turn i call it my hamster wheel and i can just feel the hamster just starting to run on it and it starts up it's like that sp- spiral of death it on feels the, like an actual spin though. it actually feels like a wheel going like you have and, a like, color wheel of stress it. <laughs> yeah, I could feel it, and the second I start feeling it, I'm yes. just like, okay. <laughs> oh my god! Let's batten down the hatches. Let's batten down the hatches. Yes. And get this, yeah. Make oh sure I have gosh. everything in place that I need. One? Pan- panic attack feels yeah i woke up like in my bathtub pre- and didn't know how i got no, there like a pre one you they sneak up on you you weren't there for that um <laughs> i did i've had them very recently um there have been i don't want to say the name because i don't want the people to feel weird but we were um we were talking with somebody over zoom for the pod it was somebody else's pod and as soon as we were done i just like got up left went to the kitchen mary jane's like what's going on right now and i just kind of like bent over in the kitchen and mm-hmm. um had to you know breathe it out and feel it out but it came out of nowhere and i was oh. like okay bye everyone and it, but I, yours is fast yeah 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 you don't get warning i have a uh, my my uh, anxiety metabolism is very quick yeah <laughs> your your anxiety is a fitbit on all the time <laughs> yep it's always getting its steps in it's got a lot of steps your <laughs> wow yeah for sure what about food wise because now you're in like the best shape of your life you're um you're a perfect being of light with a strong brain and a great comedy sense so what do you eat just air at this point um i am i do get made fun of for my ridiculous appetite in terms of like i do get full very fast uh but i bring food with me everywhere so um but i don't eat i eat okay but it's always like even a steady decline where I'll eat like a yogurt and an apple with peanut butter, but then I'll be eat like a diner burger and fries for a dinner. Like it really depends. Or like this morning I made breakfast biscuits because I've just been thinking about them. So I did make wait, like, wait, 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 what's your, do you have a good recipe? Do you have like a family just, biscuit no, recipe? What are we talking about? It was literally grand biscuits, but I just made bacon and fried an egg in the grease and because oh. I just really wanted a breakfast sandwich. So that's not technically healthy. No, but, but it's it did great. take me the entire back half of Venom to finish it. So I <laughs> eat so slow that like... Really? I'm, yeah. And that's... Is that all I've eaten today? Yeah, so I'll eat after this. The yeah, back so half of Venom, the Spider-Man movie? Yes. So I started Venom last night and was loving it, but it was getting really late, so I had to go to sleep. So I woke up this morning very excited to watch Venom, and then I made a breakfast sandwich and watched the back half of Venom, but it took me, because I kept just taking a bite and then watching Venom, and so it took me so long to finish, so I feel like I, even if I eat something unhealthy, I don't necessarily eat large quantities of mm-hmm. things. Yeah, and by the time you finish it, you're like halfway digested with the first half of yeah. it, right? And, I, and <laughs> I'm not really a sweets person as much as a salty person. Oh. So like, I'll have an ulcer or a heart attack. But like sugar, I can kind of control. But like I love chips. Like I love yeah. potatoes. I love like that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, see, I'm addicted to sugar. I think uh. I think like while you have your heart attack, I'll be like having diabetes. Yes, and, we'll and just I like... will. <laughs> I'll keel over at the diner at Norm's and be like, I regret nothing. And just like fall to one side over a steak and double order hash browns. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And you're over there drinking pints of ice cream, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Next to my Mountain Dew <laughs> is another thing. Of oh ice my god, your insulin pump. He just has two <laughs> barrels. One is melted ice cream, one is Italian Mountain Dew. <laughs> wow, 
Watchers. What What are you into right now? Well, I'm trying really hard to be on Weight Watchers and do my oh. best with like points and tracking and all that kind of stuff. But this weekend, I went to a chili cook-off with you. And a then last cook-off? night, I went to dim sum with some friends and I ate like spare ribs. So I'm not doing so well. <laughs> but is Weight Watchers better now than it used to be? I've, in terms of like how they changed it it's it's pretty like it's you know that i think they've learned a lot of lessons from everyone else who's sort of like come up with like different eating programs and stuff so they've incorporated uh, like meditation and sleep oh, and you know so different styles just... of eating yeah it i like it it's pretty nice. it's pretty holistic nice. and um i'm failing miserably this week but that's okay i'm you know i'll be i'll get back on the horse but anytime you're failing involves dim some ribs it's like what kind of I mean, failure was, are we talking about right there's here? no failure exactly thank you and what we were at this dim sum house on the recommendation of the son of the owner so we were so taken care of Aww. they kept bringing things out and saying it's on the house oh my God. fucking was, hell you know i mean how can you that's not lovely. eat everything that's put in front of you my greek the greek man that owns the diner that i go to all the time gives me a free fried jalapeno and i feel obligated i can't imagine how you felt oh that's so nice <laughs> jalapeno yeah he's very sweet he always trains in new he he'll like go in in terms of being like oh do you want to try tarragon soda okay <laughs> he's always got some crazy new thing he made in there he's great go to Edie's burgers if you live in the valley nice cool. how is tarragon soda have you is that a real it's, thing yes it's bright green and it tastes pretty good and it's okay. not very sweet Ooh, like nice. it's like I don't know what tarragon. It must taste like tarragon because it's so hard to describe. It's like almost licorice-y, but not. Yep. It's not that strong. Yep. It's good. But I was like, what are you talking about? And he like pushed tarragon soda <laughs> That's on me like one day. the most day. LA thing I've ever heard. <laughs> tarragon soda. The Greek diner yeah. owner pushing tarragon soda. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I love that guy. Wowzers. Uh, I, I also... Mary Jane. So I'm also doing Weight Watchers. We're doing it together to hold each other accountable. And last night I saw Free Guy at the AMC on Sunset. It's the new Ryan Reynolds movie. And I definitely had the large, got the large popcorn because it's a number one. It's a great deal. And I love a deal. You got to do it. And are you like gold status or something? Yeah, I'm pretty important in the AMC family. (laughs) (laughs) It flex with your status. They know me when I come in. Uh, There's there's like always a rope. It's really cool. Um, And uh, yeah, I definitely pop polished off a large popcorn last night vaping mm-hmm. in the corner of the movie theater watching free guy mm-hmm. so while you were dim summing i was popcorning uh-huh and see i will go into i don't do this anymore just because i have a past one but i used to live in westwood and i would go on walks to that mall and yeah. get popcorn for the road and just eat movie popcorn on the street, which mm. you cannot do in Florida. And I love that all, like there are multiple theaters in California where you can just get popcorn and go live your life. What? It's yeah. amazing. <laughs> it's the best. I used to do it all the time. How do you butter your popcorn? Uh, I do like, I try to like do, ooh, even if I get a cup and I pour it into a cup and then I put it in the middle and then pour it back. So I try to do two layers. But then I don't know <laughs> if y'all know Kim Congdon. Just met her. But she once posted like a long time ago, putting a straw on the butter nozzle. (laughs) And it blew my mind. (laughs) Y'all are fucking my world up with the butter straw. Like I did not need to know that. Yes. I can feel it like coating my arteries. Yep. The butter trick. Oh my God. It's so good. The butter straw. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> uh, nice. she just post retweeted that or she tweeted her doing that at the movie like years ago and i was like yeah kim you bitch never look back never look what back. did you just do to my life oh. but yeah i do love that a lot mm-hmm. damn y'all damn <laughs> uh we're coming up on it but i had one more stand-up question for you okay when you record when you filmed mm-hmm. your hour at uh at the tribeca yeah. film fest did you do one sh- like how did it how did it work because uh i'm i'm curious because i've only been to tapings mm-hmm. i've never done one so like how did it work for you and like how did you get into the flow of doing your comedy and like what was that whole experience like um well i used i'm auditory yeah so i recorded the set that i did at junior high and just played the shit out of that for like the whole week you got off book of your own book Mm -hmm. yeah and so i knew at least the order roughly and then knew what things i wanted to add to that hour that i did or whatever and because that was because it had to be at least an hour 
Oh, wow. And so when I recorded at junior high, it was like 58 minutes, but I knew that I'd forgotten like at least three jokes. So I was like, memorize this tape, know the places that you want to add those other things and you'll be fine. Wow. And so that was how I kind of like prepared for it. But I only got one. So they did two a night. So it was one at 8.30, one at 9.30. And I was at 9.30. So you got one set. mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Shit. And then, um, but two people like, uh, Bill Bellamy and I think Coco maybe got two and so I was like mm, if I'm a big shot I'm gonna ask for two that like mm-hmm. my mental thought for next time was like ooh, I'll ask for two that sounds nice <laughs> mm-hmm. um but yeah I just did that one hour and then went home <laughs> really nice, yeah you just were like okay thanks everyone bye and then you yeah just- like me and some friends went out but like even it was so it was honestly even for my first I was perfect because it was me my manager who I love so much and then my friend Bez who lives in New York she's a comic too Bez she was like the one person that came with me and um no one touched any of their stuff in our green room and I was so nervous before that I didn't do anything yeah. and my friend was like we have to do something in here. Like she was like, all of this stuff is for you. What are we doing? <laughs> and it was like right before I left and I was kind of just in this fog, I think really of just being done and it went like, what seemed fun and like, okay, whatever. And so I was like, let's drink tequila. I'll drink tequila. And so we opened the tequila. Everything still had like the wrappers on it. No one had done anything. So we took the wrapper off the tequila. I took a bunch of mini Slim Jims because that was the <laughs> only thing I really wanted. Excellent choice. Yes. And we took a shot of tequila. And then as we're being like, yay, and we took our shot, I look up and there's an old black man like emptying the trash. And I went, oh, sorry, sir. I said, do we have to leave soon? And he just went, you ain't got to go home. And just kept sweeping. <laughs> and I was like, Okay, clearly someone wrote you into my first special, but yes, we will leave. It was the best. So I, we basically took a shot of tequila, grabbed some Slim Jims, and then left. Wow. And then went to like a bar with my friends where we saw Cuba Gooding Jr., but he looked very sad. Oh, <laughs> was this Jr. pre or post sad. that chaotic video? It was like the week of that, and he was sitting in the corner of a bar with a fedora down. Whoa, wait, what happened? Uh, he lost his mind on video, pretty hammered, I think, and maybe on some was, other stuff. Uh, I don't know. There's a video that circulated, yeah, of oh. him. Uh, he was talking about like eating a, eating someone's daughter or something oh, like no. that, no. and and then like all this stuff came out about him having a micro penis. Like it was like a whole week of Cuba, and you Just saw him, him during that week. Just him getting dragged, and yeah. I didn't know that, so I was like, "What? He's downstairs? Like we should say hi." And they were like, "We don't." Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, Cuba. Wow. But yeah, apparently he was in the bar that we went to afterwards. And then, yeah. Damn. And did not sleep because I even that night was like, okay, well, I should have. Oh, Hi. sorry. Hi, sorry. That's no. inserting himself always. What's wrong? Bobo was like, you guys have recorded an hour. Please pay attention Is to me. Is he your clock? He's, uh, he's something. <laughs> His little tail. I love him. He's um, my hobgoblin. He's so cute. Also, I think a fedora says don't come up to me in any situation. You're right. Yeah. He probably brought, wore that on purpose. Yeah, that's a red flag. Of all, his, <laughs> of all his hats, he was just like one slow tear. Mm-hmm. Just put on the fedora. All right. <laughs> <Don't know where. laughs> um, but yeah, even that night, did not sleep at all. Started a Google Doc of like, oh, I could do this for like a half hour. Like all the drugs I didn't do. Or, oh, I didn't do that one. Like, and not sleeping because I was mad I didn't do it. And then, like, being like, okay, well, I can do it with this joke later. Okay. Like, just even yeah. negotiating with myself to be okay with it. And that, however, it ended up because I have that one shot, you know? Yeah, that's even how I feel about and sending an email. Like, I'll relook at an email <laughs> and be like, oh, why didn't I say this Always. and this and do this better? So I can't even imagine, like, putting an hour out and then all the things that flood in. That- yup. I just thought of one this morning. I recorded this in June. And this morning, I brushed my teeth and was like, idiot. And it was mad. <laughs> And then was like, it's okay, I'll do it like here or something. Try to find some way. But yeah. This is just the first of many. Hopefully. Yeah. Now you sound like my manager. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I would I would love to be as like a supportive, awesome person in your life to tell you that you're gonna be fucking doing great things. <laughs> what is what are you excited about right now? What's what I I learned not to say what's next. So what oh, are you what no. are you excited about right now? Um I mean I'm excited to see when the special comes out because I still have no clue. Like I've seen it and like done some back and forth and stuff, but I don't have a date or anything. Mm. So I'll be super excited for that. I'm going to High Plains uh, Comedy Festival in a couple weeks, so I'm super excited for that. I've Is never that been Denver? to a com- yeah, mm-hmm. never been to a comedy festival. So <laughs> I'm gonna do that, and then I'm excited for another idea that's like uh, in the works that like is comedy based, but it's more of like a uh, different take on it kind of 
Hmm. And so I'm excited to basically do another show, like another like one woman show Fuck yes. that's set up in a different way. Oh, that shit. That I'm like working on right now. So yeah, this I'm excited exciting. about that show. I have a pod, the, I just started this best friends thing that y'all are on that I now want to do. I'm starting another podcast with uh, two of my friends uh, that's based on art history. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Did you say art history or mm-hmm. our history? Art history. <laughs> A-R-T? Yeah. Whoa, cool. Yeah. What do you know about that? Me, nothing. I like art. <laughs> I like art. They are super smart about art. And then I will be like, look at this thing I found that I like. And they're like, blah, 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 blah. Awesome. And so that's my that's connection cool. is just appreciating. Like I go to galleries and just will be like, I don't know why, but I want to stare at this painting until they close. And I will talk to people that know more about art that way. And they will validate me through like, I trust whatever. Like I can't describe the things that I like, but other people that are very good at art for some reason will be like no you're you're okay mm-hmm. they cool. like let me in and teach me things so what's, that's yeah what's the name of that pod it's uh, gonna be pavant guard yes <laughs> so i'm pretty excited All about right. that <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Did that. All the good writing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what about your IG handle and things like that? Oh, yeah. Um, mine is Katrina Savad, which is just Davis backwards because there's a billion of us. Um, and I'm that on everything. So my Instagram, my Twitter, my website, it's just Katrina with a K and then S I V A D. And yeah, I just updated my square space today with all the do- dates for High Plains. And I'm going to have dates there like the 15th of September through the 17th. Awesome. I think I leave. And Sweet. all the great weed in uh, Denver and Colorado. I am, okay, I've only ever been to Denver before I did stand up for my day job. And I still had a great time. I couldn't yes. even look at my phone at a crosswalk without someone being like, are you lost? <laughs> <laughs> like that is the nicest city I've ever been in in my life. Very nice. And also, everyone started drinking at four. Yeah. (laughs) Cool. Like, I'm so excited to go back because that was just corporate stuff. Like, I can't imagine what comedy is going to be like. Yep. Probably drinking at four. Yeah. Maybe even three. Yeah. If people with (laughs) those, like, briefcases so heavy that they have them on rollers Uh do it, I can't imagine what comics are like. It's going to be great. (laughs) Yeah. I'm super excited. Uh, come back, please. Yes, yes. of course. Okay, cool. <laughs> so great to hang. Thank I you so you. much. Thanks for having me. Do you want to follow us at Weed and Grub? You can. Do you yep. want to follow us? You Do can. You? I, yes, you definitely want to follow at Weed and Grub on Instagram and email us at wg at weed and grub dot com with stories and pictures of your um, pets and buds. Yes, yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Katrina and Mary Jane and. Mike, You're take us home. Off for all of us? Land the plane, Mary Jane. <laughs> we're having panic attacks over here, and we're running off it. Land the plane. It's a trio of a panic attacks sitting around these three microphones. <laughs> you just hear deep breaths. I'm just eating a grape. I'm sorry. <laughs> <sighs> okay, we we'll see you all. Wish you all a calm. <laughs> yes. Bye, yes. Rod. Bye. Bye.